have been asked whether the Newbery Medal is actually an odd sort of burden in terms of the greater responsibility one feels. For me, the opposite has been true. I think the Newbery freed me to risk failure. A book, too, can be a star, explosive material, capable of stirring up fresh life endlessly, a living fire to lighten the darkness, leading out into the expanding universe. I want to write a book where a kid starts to learn how valuable his or her own life is and is able to see him or herself as beautiful, and not just physically, but also where they live. Grandmother used to tell hair-raising ghost stories at the hour called the Dark 30. That's 30 minutes before it gets all the way dark and the monsters come out. I met my biological father while I was attending middle school in Harlem. I wondered what he was like and tried to get to know him without too much success. That bothered me, and like everything else that bothers me, eventually wound up in a book. I came across a quote from Moby Dick. It is not down in any map. True places never are. True places. That really sparked my imagination. I wanted to write a book to talk about not just gun violence, but more so about how human it is to be angry as a child and how we don't want to discuss that pain and the trauma, especially when it comes to laws. Imagine being 10 and finding out one of your relatives is a Black Panther and they just hijacked the plane. I really loved writing this story because it's about all the things that change for us when we're 11 and 12, our friends, our feelings about boys, the craziness that goes on at school every day, all of that. I believe most writers have a home, which is ideas and subject matter they need and want to write about, sometimes over and over. I also want to just share that whole positive outlook and image of African-American boys, injecting a little bit of confidence, affirmation, and the fact that the community, you know, supports and loves and thinks that they are just as beautiful as they feel when they look in that handheld mirror. There was a color photo of a beautiful ceramic vase, and I immediately wondered, how in the world could anyone make something like that? So I started to research Korean celadon pottery, and the story began to take shape in my mind. When Michael Jordan takes off from the foul line and dunks the ball, or when the San Antonio Spurs pass the ball around like a hot potato and it has so much rhythm in how they move the ball around the court, it's something very poetic and very rhythmic about that. And so I said, well, poetry is going to be the best way to tell a story. When I was 10, the Vietnam War ended and my family and I had to move to Alabama. I was in the fourth grade and didn't speak English and I was the first Asian any of my classmates had seen outside of television. It was a time when the country was searching for its own identity, which seemed to have been lost. And in the Wednesday Wars, I wanted to follow a middle school kid who was looking for his own identity in a kind of tumultuous time. Often, people see us differently than we see ourselves. And sometimes, that can open a door that we didn't know was there. 
I chose one document from 1828 which listed 11 slaves for sale as property with just the name and a price. It's an homage to the folk tales and fairy tales I read in my youth. It's a mixture of Asian fairy tales and North American classics. Not a traditional retelling of stories from either cultures. It's a mix, like me, Asian American. This book found its beginnings off of a simple writing prompt, which was to take a traditional fairy tale and make it sci-fi. I've read the story at least a dozen times now, and each time I get to that last line, I can feel myself lifted up with surprise and gratitude and joy. That is to say that I am made capacious. My heart is made capacious by the story. What motivated me to write The Watsons Go to Birmingham 1963 is one word, fear. I had taken a year off work to see if I could write a book. And when you don't have an income and you're wasting maybe a whole year, that's pretty scary. I wanted readers to know this family based upon my own, and I wanted them to feel akin to them and to walk in their shoes. What do I want kids to learn from the book? Just the capacity to empathize with other people. The inspiration for Maniac McGee came from a song. I loved its vision of everyone. All colors, all beliefs, all sorts. Everyone having fun together. My homily would tell me Korean fairy tales, and my favorite was the story of the sun and the moon and the tiger. Hello Universe came to me first with a character. I saw a boy sitting alone, afraid in a dark place, and I wondered why he was there, what he was afraid of. And then I suddenly realized that I could write a ghost story about a trans kid, and the whole story just popped into my head from there. I wanted to show that there could be a story about disability that wasn't maudlin and sappy. The Newbery Committee was gutsy, too. There would have been safer books, more comfortable books, more familiar books. They took a trip beyond the realm of sameness with this one, and I think they should be very proud of that.